Welcome to another presentation about the origin of the Carolina Bays. The extensions of the major axes of the Carolina Bays and Nebraska rainwater basins converge by the Great Lakes. This presentation examines some of the problems of fitting ellipses to the basins and the counterintuitive features of great circle trajectories. This is a LiDAR image of the Nebraska rainwater basins. They are located about 520 meters above sea level on ancient sandy deposits from the Platte River. The terrain is relatively rough and erosion has destroyed or deformed many of the basins. I selected several basins, fitted them with ellipses by the least squares method, and determined their orientation. This image shows lines illustrating the extension of their major axis. Some basins are well preserved and they can be fitted with ellipses fairly easily. This basin has precise borders and we can select points along the perimeter of the basin at the transition from red to pink in the colorized topography. Notice that no points were selected near the rim break that distorted the shape of the basin. After fitting the points with an ellipse by the least squares method, we can see that all the points touch the ellipse. This indicates a good fit. The fact that the Nebraska rainwater basins have elliptical geometry, just like the Carolina Bays, is an indication that these geological features originated as inclined conical cavities because ellipses are conic sections. The ellipse fitting program calculates the azimuth of this basin as 244.5 degrees. Using the ruler tool from Google Earth, we can draw an azimuth line of 244.5 degrees by dissecting the ellipse. We can then extend the line toward the Great Lakes while maintaining the same azimuth. When we look back at the basin, we notice that the azimuth line is no longer bisecting the ellipse. What happened? We need to examine how maps are represented in order to understand why the azimuth line of this basin appears different at the local level and when it is extended as a great circle trajectory on a spherical Earth. We are all familiar with maps of the Earth represented as a Mercator projection, which is a cylindrical map projection designed by Flemish mapmaker Gerardus Mercator in 1569. This became the standard map projection for navigation because it preserves local directions and shapes. The horizontal lines are called parallels and they are used to determine latitude. The vertical lines are called meridians. They converge at the poles and they are used to determine longitude. The equator is a line that divides the northern hemisphere from the southern hemisphere. The equator is assigned a latitude of 0 degrees, while the poles have a latitude of 90 degrees. North-south directions are assigned a latitude relative to the equator. The prime meridian in Greenwich, England is marked by a metal line fixed into the Royal Observatory Courtyard and it has a longitude of 0 degrees. East-west directions are assigned a longitude relative to the prime meridian. From the Mercator projection, it appears that we can draw a line perpendicular to the meridians to connect Washington, D.C. to Lisbon, Portugal, since both cities have approximately the same latitude. However, a great circle trajectory with a heading of 90 degrees from Washington, D.C. goes to the Western Sahara in Africa because the Earth is spherical and not cylindrical. In order to connect Washington to Lisbon with a great circle trajectory, we need to start with a heading of 67.34 degrees from Washington. That is the explanation of why the azimuth line of this basin appears different at the local level and when it is extended as a great circle trajectory on a flat map. There are some basins that are heavily eroded or distorted by land movement. It is difficult to choose the points for fitting an ellipse. The colorized topography shows that the rim of the basin is at the transition from pink to blue, but when selecting the points, it is necessary to avoid the parts of the basin that are breached by fluvial channels or distortions. These sections of the basin perimeter are highlighted in yellow. Following these principles, I chose 16 points along the perimeter of the basin. In spite of the severe degradation of this basin, most of the points are adjacent to the elliptical path. One point to the east, where the basin has a large fluvial channel, is outside the elliptical curve. The azimuth calculated based on the orientation of the ellipse is 249.4 degrees. This would have been impossible to determine without using mathematics. This is a LiDAR image of Carolina Bays near the Piedmont, about 10 kilometers southwest from Orangeburg, South Carolina. The basins that are on inclined terrain have been distorted by flow of material from higher elevation into the center of the basin, giving them a guitar pick shape. The basins that are on level ground have preserved their elliptical geometry. 
I selected points at the margins of the basin rims, avoiding drainage channels. Fitting ellipses through the points produced very good results and the azimuths were generated from the orientation of the ellipses. This image shows the extensions of the azimuths toward the Great Lakes region. The lines from the basins in Nebraska and South Carolina converge in Wisconsin at a latitude of approximately 43.7 degrees north and longitude 89.0 degrees west, but a few lines are oriented toward Michigan. The basins in Nebraska are located approximately 900 kilometers from the convergence point in Wisconsin. Ballistic trajectories for projectiles launched at 45 degrees would have had flight times of about 7.2 minutes. The basins in South Carolina are located 1,300 kilometers from the convergence point. These ballistic flights would have taken about 8.6 minutes. The Earth rotates eastward 0.25 degrees of arc for every minute of flight time. To compensate for the rotation of the Earth at the latitude of the convergence point, the point from where the projectiles were launched needs to be adjusted eastward by about 20 km per minute of flight time. The dashed line indicates that a flight time of 8 minutes would have placed the point of origin of the projectiles that made the basins in the middle of Lake Michigan. This portion of Lake Michigan was covered with ice as late as 12,900 years ago. The impact of a comet fragment at this time and at this location would have ejected pieces of glacier ice in ballistic trajectories that could have formed the Nebraska basins and the Carolina Bays. The secondary impacts would also have killed animals in the ballistic sedimentation area and triggered an extinction event. In this presentation, I only considered the orientations of the basins in Nebraska and South Carolina. I used the azimuths calculated from fitting ellipses to the basins by the least squares method. This provides an objective method of determining the orientation of the basins. As you have seen, the methodology is elaborate and requires meticulous attention to detail. Nothing about the Carolina base is easy, but with mathematical analysis and persistence, we can gain a better understanding about the origin of the Carolina base. Thank you for joining me in the investigation of the Carolina base and the Younger Dryas Cataclysm. The Carolina base should not be neglected. Ask your geology professors to discuss the Carolina Bays because they are the most prevalent geological structures in the Atlantic coastal plain. There's a link to the LiDAR visualization tool in the description of the video. My book about the Carolina Bays is available at Amazon. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified of future videos about the Carolina Bays and other scientific topics.